what's up stats scholars in this normal lesson i will be teaching you about density curves and the empirical rule now if you recall back to chapter one we were talking about describing distributions by using our four letter acronym socks shape outlier center spread now sometimes we collect data from a lot of observations and what happens is the distribution is so regular that we can describe it using a smooth curve um, here you can see in this example we have a histogram that's kind of boxy and what we end up doing is drawing this kind of line that describes the overall pattern. You've seen me do that in class. It, it's often easier to tell the shapes. Now uh, that smooth line is actually called a density curve. And the main thing to understand about density curves is that the area underneath it is 1. It has an area of 1 representing 100% of the observation. So everyone falls somewhere under this curve. In this case, we had vocabulary scores. OK. Now, density curves, uh, they come in all different sizes and shapes. We've got symmetric, you got your skewed right, skewed left, what, uh, et cetera. Now, uh, again, we're going to be talking a lot about percentages and area, this area under the curve. OK. Uh, continued kind of ideas that mean and median are the same if it's symmetric and the mean is uh, just always skewed towards the tail. Most of the ones that we deal with in this chapter, uh, if not all of them, are going to be uh, approximately symmetric or, or roughly symmetric. Now let's talk about normal distributions, hence my pun at the beginning of the video. A density curve that is symmetric, single peaked, and bell shaped is called a normal curve. Uh, you know it is, it is a bell curve, basically. All normal distributions have the same overall shape, which we said is uh, approximately normal or approximately symmetric. Now, they're described by two things. We've got our center, which because it's symmetric, we're going to call the mean, and we're going to use this new symbol, mu. And then we have our standard deviation, which we're going to use the symbol sigma, uh, which is a lowercase uh, s in the Greek alphabet. Now, you'll see later in the video uh, some text of these, so you can tell what they look like a little bit better than my scribble scratch handwriting. So we've got mean, and we've got standard deviation. OK. so. As we've discussed before, a large standard deviation versus small standard deviation. Standard deviation is the me is a measure of spread. How far apart are the data or are the observations on average from the mean? So a large standard deviation, the graph will be more spread out over here. And in a small, uh, if the data has small standard deviation, all the numbers are going to be a lot closer together and they won't be as spread out. So that again gives you that visualization of what that number standard deviation means. You can also see the symbol here, mu, a little bit better. And you can see the symbol sigma here a little bit better. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is the empirical rule. So if we have a data set and the data exhibits the qualities uh, of a, an approximately normal distribution, it's bell shaped, okay, it has a mean in the middle, and then it has a standard deviation. We're going to generalize it, everything, kind of go back to this standard normal curve that has a mean of zero. Think about z scores, all right? The mean is zero from the mean, um, and the standard deviation of one. So, means in the middle, we go one standard deviation to the right, or one, two, three standard deviations to the right, negative one, negative two, negative three standard deviations to the left, or below. Remember, negative z scores have. Um, are below the mean. So the basic rule is that if I branch out one standard deviation from the mean, that's up one and down one, that area under the curve, and I'll shade it so you can kind of visualize it, this area here represents approximately 68% of the observation. So Again, 68% of the observations are one standard deviation above and below the mean. And you can kind of see that in the graph. Now, if I continue out the graph, now I go two standard deviations out the graph. I don't know why I erased that if I'm just going to shade it again anyways. But here you get the picture. 
if I go out to two standard deviations, that area is now 95%, or 95% of the observations fall within two standard deviations of the mean. If I keep going all the way out to three, all the way out to three, you notice that I get 99.7% of the data or the observation. Now, what that's basically saying is almost all of your data is going to be within three standard deviations. The only thing you don't have is you have this little tiny tail right here and this little tiny tail right here uh, that are outside of three standard deviations. Okay, so that's something you're just going to have to memorize. All right, we call that the empirical rule. That's the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. I'm great. I'm alive. I'm in heaven. That's kind of how I uh, remember that. Okay, now, a couple of the numbers you should write down. So, you should have this sketched down in, in your notebook. Again, if you need to pause it, feel free to. So, uh, we talked about the numbers inside or the percent of the observations inside, let's talk about outside. So, if I'm at one standard deviation, okay, I shaded in between those. Now, what if I wanted to know this area here that was above or below? I wanted to know what percent of the observations fall within that. Now, the whole graph is 100%. So if the middle of that is 68%, that gives me 32% left over for the tail. Since it's symmetric, the tails are the same. If I cut that in half, I get 16%. So basically, this shaded red area here, less than one standard deviation, or, or, or one standard deviation below, is going to be 16%. And this here, above one standard deviation, is going to be 16%. So those are those two individual areas there. Okay. So you should have that written down. That number eventually you're going to have to have again memorized. So if I go out to two standard deviations, we said that that's 95% in between those. Well, what if I wanted to know this area? Or this area? All right, again, we use kind of the same idea. There's 100% overall the whole graph. There's 95% in between those two data points. Actually, let's write it down here. There's 100% overall. There's 95% in between two standard deviations. That gives me 5% in both tails. Cut that in half, I get 2.5%. So this tail here is 2.5%. And this tail here is 2.5%. All right, so below two standard deviations, 2.5%. Above two standard deviations, 2.5%. Now we have one little area left. And that's, as I spoke of earlier, this little shaded area, this real tip of the tail. So again, 100% is the whole thing. 99.7 is in between three standard deviations. I get 0.3%. Cut that in half. I get 0.15%. A very, 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 very small percentage. 0.15%. 0.15%. So if you're past three standard deviations away from the mean, that's very, very rare. Now, let's put this uh, into work with some examples. First example we have here is distribution of heights. So let's say that the distribution of heights of young women aged 18 to 24 is approximately normal with the mean, again, mu, it's like a U with a tail on the front, is 64 and a half inches and a standard deviation sigma, it's a little circle with a hat, 2.5 inches. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated as capital N 64.5, uh, 2.5. And you will always they're always in the order of the mean first, and then the standard deviation. Okay, so what that's basically saying is the average girl is six, aged 18 to 24, of course, is 64 and a half inches tall. So that's about five foot four and a half. And on average, the numbers are two and a half uh, from the mean. So 
first thing we're going to do is determine the 68, 95, 99.7 interval. So take a second to sketch this bell curve. By the end of this chapter, you guys will be pros at sketching bell curves. I label the middle 64.5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the standard deviation of 2.5 to get the three points above and below. So I'm going to add 2.5 and get 67. Add 2.5 again, get 69.5. Add 2.5 again, and I get 72. I go back to the mean, uh, 64.5, and I'm going to subtract 2.5 each time and get 62. 59.5 and 57. Okay, so those are what's called my points of inflection. Now, we have 68, 95, 99.7. We have those labels. Now we're going to answer some questions based on that data. What interval does the middle 68% lie? Do you remember from my rule? 68% lies one standard deviation away. So between 62 to 67 inches. So 68% of all girls aged 18 to 24 are between 62 inches tall and 67 inches tall. That's five foot two and five foot seven. Okay. Uh, what does the bottom sixteen percent of the data look like? Now again, I'm going to have to know these numbers. I know that the bottom sixteen percent is the is one standard deviation away. Again, I got sixty-eight percent in the middle. I took a hundred minus sixty-eight. That gave me thirty-two percent in each tail. I cut that in half. I got sixteen percent. So this area right here. It is 62%. So below 62 inches. Right? So if you are below 62 inches tall and you're a female aged 18 to 24, you're at the bottom 60%. What percentage of young women are taller than 64.5? That's an easy one. 64.5 is mean. And it's pretty easy to see that that area there is 50%. And then the last one, what percent of women are taller than 69.5 inches? That's this shaded area right here. And again, the middle is 95. That means that the tails are 5%. I cut that in half, I get 2.5%. Okay, now, and, and again, with, with these numbers, it, it kind of makes sense. You think of heights, here's 72 inches. That's six foot tall. I don't know that many women aged 18 to 24 that are six foot tall or taller. So that's why that number is so far, that's three standard deviations away. Okay, now, we're going to do uh, a problem on your own. So what I want you to do is, I want you to take a second to read this talking about fuel economy of cars, um, and I want you to try A, B, C, D, E. I want you to try those on your own. So go ahead and pause the video, try those on your own, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll have the answers for you so you can check and see how you're getting this. Okay, so I'll kind of walk through it just in case you're still struggling with it. Part A says uh, labeled as 68, 99.7. So I draw my bell curve, and again, it's just a sketch, doesn't have to be perfect. I label the mean, which is 24.8, and I label the standard deviation, which is 6.2. Then I mark three points above and three points below. I'm going to add 6.2 each time. And once I have those points labeled, then that will help me answer the question. And there you have your answers. The toughest one is probably part C. It says, um, which I'm looking for this area right here, between 31 to 37.2. Now, very quickly, I know that the whole tail is 16%. I know that this tail is 2.5, so I subtract it, and that's how I get the 13.5%. Enjoy.